Greetings, everyone. We greet you in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. This is the Gospel Uncompromised. I am Minister D. Bush from the Church of God. The church is built upon the foundation of the apostles and prophets, with Jesus Christ himself the chief cornerstone. We thank God for another opportunity to come into your homes, into your vehicles, or wherever you might be listening to this broadcast. Now, if you have questions or comments regarding this broadcast, feel free to contact us. You can reach us by email. Email address is ministerdbush at gmail.com. You can also give us a call. Telephone number is 713-203-3474. Now, listeners, we encourage you to get your Bibles out. Grab a notepad and pen and follow along with us as we see what thus said the Lord. Now, this morning, we're going to begin a new series uh, that might appear to be somewhat controversial. We're going to be uh, defying many of the going against most of the religious grain. And let me just preface this by saying you've often heard me say uh, that popularity is not a referendum for righteousness. Just because something is popular doesn't mean it's right. Now we're going to take an in-depth look at women preachers. We're going to see what the Word of God says regarding this matter. Now I know we're in a, a season now where uh, that's at an all-time popularity, all-time high in popularity. Uh, that's just like a homosexuality is at an all-time high for popularity, but it, it's still just as wrong as ever. Now I want you to go with me uh, in your Bibles. Let's just get right to the heart of the matter. First Timothy chapter 2 and we'll begin reading at verse 12. Now, uh, and, and also let me just say this. When it comes to the Word of God, you and I don't get to have opinions. The Word of God says what it says. First Timothy uh, chapter 2 and verse 12, the Word of God says, But I suffer not a woman to teach, nor usurp authority over the man, but to be in silence. Now that is very clear. Now there are those out there who will try to uh, explain away that. They will say that Paul was being uh, chauvinistic. You can have whatever opinion you, you want to have, but at the end of the day, the Word of God says what it says. It is not the will of God for a woman to preach or pastor. There's no way a woman can pastor without usurping authority over a man. A pastor is a position of spiritual authority. And the word of God clearly states here, But I suffer not a woman to teach nor usurp authority over the man, but to be in silence. Now, over the next couple of programs, we're just going to dive into this and really break it down. So just follow along with us. And I realize that uh, this will probably uh, not be in favor of many, but I I'm, I'm game. Whatever questions you have, we'll give our information again at the end of the program, and you can, you can contact us. We'll be more than willing to discuss this with you. Now, turn into your Bibles uh, over to 1 Corinthians 1 Corinthians chapter 12, 1 Corinthians chapter 12, and we will uh, read at verse 18. 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 18, the word of God says, But now hath God set the members, every one of them, in the body as it pleased him. God uh, created this, the world to function as it pleased him. And any time there's confusion, any time there's a mess, man has something to do with it. Now, uh, God, God said, Paul spoke through the inspiration of the Holy Ghost saying, He suffered not a woman to teach or usurp authority over a man. That's the will of God. And uh, he says here at uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 18, But now had God set the members, every one of them, in the body as it pleased him. Why did God do it that way? It because it pleased him. I who am I to, to question what God designed? Now uh, I want you to turn back uh, about a page or so to First Corinthians chapter eleven. First Corinthians chapter eleven, and we'll begin reading at verse one. Now, 
1 Corinthians chapter 11 and at verse 1. The word of God says, Be ye followers of me, even as I also am of Christ. Now I praise you, brethren, that you remember me in all things and keep the ordinances as I deliver them to you. Now, verse 3, we're in 1 Corinthians chapter 11 at verse 3. But I would have you know that the head of every man is Christ, and the head of the woman is the man, and the head of Christ is God. So we have established the pecking order, as it were, right here. The head of every man is Christ. And the head of the woman is the man. And the head of Christ is God. That's the order. That's divine order. That's from heaven. And you and I can't do anything about that except fall in line. So Paul says, I suffer not a woman to teach or usurp authority over the man. But to be in silence. That's, that's the order. That's the divine order that God gave. Let's, let's read it again. But I would have you know that the head of every man is Christ. And the head of the woman is the man. And the head of Christ is God. Beloveds, we, we, again, we have to understand that when it comes to the word of God, our opinions don't matter. Uh, uh, we don't get to have opinions when it comes down to the word of God. In fact, in one place over in Isaiah 55 and 8, he says, Your thoughts are not my thoughts. Your ways are not my ways. There's some th God does things how he chose to do them. Now, let's fast forward for the sake of time. We're still in 1 Corinthians chapter 11. Uh, we're going to drop down now to verse number 8. Yeah, now, there's one thing you have to understand is man came from God, but the woman came from the man. Now, now we'll say that again. Man came from God. And the woman came from the man. And, and uh, let's, just, no, let's just proof text that. Let's look at 1 Corinthians chapter 11 at verse 8 now. The word of God says, For the man is not of the woman, but the woman of the man. Neither was the man created for the woman, but the woman for the man. Now this uh, this may come across as as you know uh, archaic and, and barbaric and and so forth, but it's the, it's the word of God. You, you know uh, uh, we we have to just stick with what the word of God says, and then everything will be okay. Now the, the problems that we face in our society today is because men have gotten beside themselves. And we have decided that we want to do what we want to do. We know better than God. Now let's go back to First uh, Timothy chapter two, verse twelve. First Timothy chapter two, verse twelve, and the word of God says, "But I suffer not a woman to teach, nor usurp authority over the man, but to be in silence." For Adam was first formed, then Eve. Now that's congruent to the scriptures that we just read over in First Corinthians chapter eleven. For Adam was first formed, then Eve, and Adam was not deceived, but the woman being deceived was in the transgression. Notwithstanding, she shall be saved in childbearing if they continue in faith and charity and holiness with sobriety. That's God's order. That's the God's design. God has always felt thought this way. Now, there are many of those out there who will try to say that this is just Paul's uh, uh, idea that Paul somehow ran amok when he uh, made these writings here but let's go over to uh, uh, 1 Corinthians chapter uh, 14 1 Corinthians chapter um, 14 and we'll um, as I said we'll, this we'll, it's going to take us a couple of programs to really just dive into this and just stay with us and we'll show you what the word of God says according uh, about this matter. 1 Corinthians chapter 14 and uh, we'll begin reading at verse number 33 and the word of God says for God is not the author of confusion but of peace as in all the churches of the saints. Let your women keep silence in the churches for it is not permitted unto them to speak but they are commanded to be under obedience as also said the law. Again, nothing we can do with that. The word of God is the word of God. 
Now, and, and I like there again, there are those who would say, well, Paul was just off on some trip. Well, God has always thought that way. Let's go back to the old, over to the Old Testament now, and we'll show you uh, how God felt about women leadership when it came to, down to the church. Let's go back and look at Isaiah, uh, Isaiah chapter, uh, I believe it's Isaiah chapter 3. Isaiah chapter 3. Uh, just follow along with us in the scriptures now, and we'll, we'll see what God says about this matter. Isaiah chapter 3 and at verse number 12. Isaiah chapter 3, verse 12, and the word of God says, As for my people... Children are their oppressors, and women rule over them. O oh, my people, they which lead thee cause thee to err, and destroy the way of thy path. God, again, this is what the way God has felt. He's felt like this for, forever. But we'll, we'll read it again. We're in Isaiah chapter 3, verse 12, where God says, As for my people, children are their oppressors, and women rule over them. Oh, my people. That doesn't sound, the prophet's not very, very, he doesn't sound very thrilled about it. Oh, my people, they which lead thee cause thee to err and destroy the way of thy path. Anytime you step outside the will of God, uh, you, you're headed for trouble. Now, um, we want to drop back real quick. Uh, we're still in, we're going to just work in the Old Testament for a few minutes now. Uh, and the book of Numbers, the book of Numbers, jump back to the book of Numbers, uh, chapter 27. Numbers chapter 27. <clears throat> And we'll start reading at about verse number uh, 15. Numbers chapter 27, verse number 15. And the word of God says, And Moses spake unto the Lord, saying, Let the Lord, the God of all, the God of the spirits of all flesh, set a man over the congregation. Let's see. Let the Lord, the God of the spirit of all flesh, set a man over the congregation. He didn't say man or woman. It's very specific there. Set a man over the congregation, which may go out before them, which may go in before them, and which may lead them out, and which may bring them in, that the congregation of the Lord be not as sheep which have no shepherd. Essentially, what he's, what he's saying there, if a congregation that doesn't have a, a, a man leading them, essentially is, is, is like sheep that don't have a shepherd. Now, we're in Numbers chapter 27 and verse 16, where the Lord says, Let the Lord, the God of the Spirit of all flesh, set a man over the congregation. That, that's, that's very clear. Very plain. Again, when it comes to the Word of God, you and I do not get to have opinions. We just follow what the Word of God says. Now, we're going to get into some of the arguments uh, about whether God was being gender specific. Uh, just So we encourage you to tune in again next week. We'll dive into this uh, a little bit deeper. And we see the time has uh, gotten away from us. Uh, thank you for listening to the Gospel Uncompromised. We certainly hope something was said to help somebody. Now, if you have questions or comments regarding this broadcast, and I'm sure many of you do, feel free to contact us. You can reach us by email. The email address is ministerdbush at gmail.com. Once again, that email address is ministerdbush at gmail.com. Dot com and we read and answer all of our emails so feel free to email us or you can give us a call the telephone number is 713-203-3474 once again that telephone number is 713-203-3474 well beloveds thank you for listening to the gospel uncompromised this is minister d bush inviting you to tune in again next week until then we say may the lord bless you may the lord have mercy upon you and may you open eyes of your understanding